Ok, benvenuti, ben ritrovati, ciao a tutti, welcome to everyone. Finally, uh, a new webinar. It seems uh, that uh, I'm only occupied by telescopes and uh, the moon uh, lately. <laughs> Uh, sorry in advance for uh, my bad English. I hope that everything will be clear. This webinar, moment. This webinar is uh, based on this article on my blog, Common Misconceptions About uh, Reverberation. You can find it also in the ProSound training section of the Scene Oldcon site. The reverberation topic is often uh, subject of confusion and uh, misconceptions. In this webinar we will see the most common, which I found in reading uh, some articles or books, uh, etc., on the topics, for example, of equalization, FFT analyzer, etc. Uh, some topics have already been covered in the previous webinar, like the one on acoustic parameters, for example. Reverberation, like other acoustic characteristics, is something that uh, is uh, strictly, strictly related to the reality of the rooms, something uh, we must take into account. So, uh, in sound system design and, and the tuning processes, acoustical parameters are characteristics of the specific room. Direct sound. Soundcheck is the definitive audio test disc. It contains practical material compiled. Soundcheck is the definitive Eerie audio energy. test disc. It contains practical material compiled as a result of careful research. Soundcheck is the definitive audio energy. test disc. It contains practical material compiled as a result Characterize our sound experience in every place according to their mutual relationships. In the room impulse response, uh, which represents the signature of the room, uh, we observe all the components of, of the sound phenomenon, with a single shot and a single glance. In a closed uh, environment, the acoustic field can be of three different types. Direct sound field, also called improperly free field, reverberant field, semi-reverberant field. And so, misconception number one. We can talk of reverberant field in every space. Well-defined geometric reflections, or a lot of reflections, are often confused with the more complex concept of uh, reverberant field. Many believe that uh, um, in every space uh, a proper reverberant field can be defined. When we talk about a reverberant field instead, we are talking about the real reverberant field, that is diffused, homogeneous, stochastic, that means uh, uh, random, uh, with no uh, uh, identifiable directions. It is uh, generated in the so-called Sabinian spaces, Sabinian environments. These environments are characterized by uh, great dimensions, generally. Uh, a mixed geometry, no one dimension prevails over the others, low absorption, uniform distribution of the absorbent units. The truly Sabinian spaces are not so common in, uh, in, an, in a reality, uh, in the sense that uh, those uh, uh, we usually deal with are characterized by a semi-reverberant field behavior, uh, in which uh, um, areas of uh, direct field uh, near the soles near the source, uh, where the contribution of the direct energy prevails, uh, coexist with reverberant field zones, at a distance from the source, for example, where uh, um, the reflected field prevails. 
Misconception number two. These two uh, fundamental concepts are often confused. Reverberation time and the level of the reverberant field are not the same thing. The first is a decay time uh, related to the duration of the decay of the room uh, stimulated, for example, by an impulse source. For, uh, the second, instead, is a level, a quantity of uh, a, a sound field, the reverberant field. A well-designed sound system is capable of producing a low level of reverberant field even in a, a, in a space with a high reverberation time. Changes in the reverberation time require variations in the absorbent units. This is important or uh, variations in the surfaces of the room, or in its geometry. Instead, changes in the reverberant field level require changes in the way sound energy is introduced into the room. Misconception number three. Direct directional behaviors of loudspeakers induce reverberation. I have read this in a recent article. The reverberant sound field is dependent only upon the sound power level and is not uh, directly dependent on the Q, the directivity factor. This is a picture of the, of the analysis of two room impulse response gathered in the same room with the same signal test and two speakers of different Q directivity factor. One uh, with the Q equal to one, the room impulse response in the top window. One with Q of 45, the room impulse response in the bottom window. The characteristics of the decay change, you see it. In fact, by varying Q, the directivity factor, we change the way of introducing energy into the environment. But uh, basically, if we are in a Sabinian environment, a real reverberant space, so uh, the reverberation time value will change a little, as you can see in the first impulse response. T 30 is uh, 1, 1.63 second. The second, uh, in the bottom window, you see 1.61 second. We uh, uh, realize this even by looking at the opt-in strikers formulas in their simplified version. The Q uh, is only in uh, present in the direct field direct field level formula, not in the reverberant field level formula. Misconception number four, raising the level of the loudspeaker increases the direct to reverberant ratio. As you can see in the simple form of the Hopkins striker equations, the level of reverberant field changes if we change the power level of the speaker. Happens so that uh, um, changing the power level of the source, you change of the same quantity both reverberant field and the direct field levels. So, in the room, the direct to reverb ratio remains the same. Allow me uh, a further clarification of this. While Q, the reactivity factor, does not directly affect the T60 and uh, the level of reverberant field, field LR, it can indeed indirectly affect LR. In fact, this is uh, accounted for in the MA term in the LR formula. 
in its complete version. If the DI, the directivity index of the speaker, and our choices of design confine the, the energy uh, to a specific area eh, uh, with high absorption, so like the audience, then the LR, the level of reverberant field, is reduced because the effectiveness of SA is increased over randomly scattered SA. Remember, SA are the, are the uh, absorbance units. Misconception number five. Reverberant sound create comb filter. As previously said, a reverberant field is uniform and stochastic with no particular Id identifiable direction. So, reverberant fields don't generate comb filters that are related instead in the acoustic domain uh, to specific phenomena in the time domain, like geometric uh, reflections or copies of the signal from other speakers, for example, uh, that can be um, uh, that can be defined by a geometric acoustic behavior. Misconception number six, the last for this short webinar. It's about the topic of uh, analyzer and uh, reverberant field. <laughs> but how many things are written uh, in this? Uh, in the articles. An FFT analyzer in transfer fraction mode can read as uncorrelated the noise as well as read as uncorrelated the reverberant field. But the analyzer can read as correlated or uncorrelated the reflections um, depending on the measurement window of the analyzer and their er arrival times is clear. While reverberation, in other words, can be treated as noise when it comes to speech intelligibility, uh, it is uh, actually uh, repeatable at a point in, in, a spa in space. That is why uh, our analyzer can measure it. Noise can be averaged out by the analyzer, but reverberation cannot. This is important. Uh, it is when uh, the microphone is moved to other positions, to other positions that uh, uh, we see um, the, um, the universal uh, nature of statistical field. I hope that this is clear. Well, a short webinar. We have come to the end. Thank you for following the webinar. Feel free to write your questions and uh, request uh, for clarifications in the comment in the video. The webinar recording will be available on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao.